Have you ever wondered if you could create a morning routine that would change the rest of your day? That's what we'll talk about today. Everyone who's ever taken a shower has an idea. It's the person who gets out of the shower, dries off, and does something about it who makes a difference. Nolan Bushnell. Today we're going to talk about the book, The Shower Habit, 10 Steps to Increase Energy, Boost Confidence, and Achieve Your Goals Without Waking Up Earlier, by Stephanie Ewing. Well, you had to know that I was going to like this book the first time I saw the cover of it because it said the words, without waking up earlier. I like anyone who tells me I don't have to wake up earlier. So right away, the book had my attention. She said these ideas helped her get over some very serious points in her life. It helped her start their day with confidence. She says it'll boost our productivity, reduce our stress, and increase happiness. Who doesn't want all those things? I am a big fan of having a morning routine, more so than I think even having a nighttime routine, primarily because I'm such a mess in the morning. My brain is not there. I'm not a morning person. It takes a while to get all the cobwebs out of my brain after I wake up. So having a morning routine helps me a lot just getting my day started correctly. She understands that when we try to get things done, we have a lot of things going on in our lives. And the idea that we have to add a lot of things onto our plate, it's just not going to fly. And how can we take time that is already a part of our day and bring it in to help us actually go towards our goals, start our day off right. And I think even with the morning routine itself, when you have something that you can be successful with, it'll encourage you your whole day. If you're able to tackle the very first thing in the day, get it done, you feel good. And that sets up the structure for the whole day too. She said that this shower habit will help us get motivated, will give us energy levels, and it'll help us finish all the things that we want to finish. We're not lazy. We're not procrastinators. Sometimes we need some stuff to get energized in the morning. And so she wants this whole process to be positive. She has an initial quiz that helps us to understand if we have what it takes to do her shower habit, which includes, do you have a shower? And so she'll say, if you've passed this test, which is a very easy test to pass, now you're ready to take on her challenge. If you're struggling, she says, to get out of bed, then try to think about what's the very first thing that you would love to do every morning. I used to love to scratch my cat's ears. They'd always sit right by me waiting for me to wake up. She said, then we're going to keep a journal next to our bed and write down all our intentions for the day and what rewards we're going to get for getting those things done. Cool. Now we got that down. But those two parts are going to help us get out of bed so we can take that shower. So that we should clean our shower, clean up the mirror, make it nice in there so that we can start our day off in a pleasant place. Now that our bathroom looks good, it's usable, we're ready then to go after our tasks. She also says we need a group of people, family and friends, who can help us meet our goals together. Have some friends and family with you not in the shower. And just being with those people, she says, not in the shower, will help us for our accountability. It's always the people who care about us that will help us keep accountable to the things we're trying to do. And she wants us to think, do we want to have more energy in the morning? Maybe we could exercise. Maybe we could get things done. I know I'd love to have more energy in the morning. I'm pretty tired. The first aspect is if we need more energy in the morning, because we have a whole list of things that we need to get done during the day, this is where we're going to have this shower habit help us so that we can help our family, help other people. She said that everyone needs to take care and fill their own buckets so that we can live a great life, but help other people too. If our buckets aren't filled, we're going to be terrible for other people. So here's step number one. Every day, get into the shower. Okay, pretty good. That's a pretty good step. It's easy to do. It's easy to get done. And we're going to feel great that we actually accomplished our very first task of the day. She wants us to write down our daily tasks, this method, on our mirror. 
She says, you may not know this, but the mirror is a fantastic write-on wipe-off board. And if every morning we check things off the list, we'll feel even better about it. She said then the next step is that we're going to end our shower with a cold blast of water. Woo! Okay, a lot of people don't like to feel cold, particularly when they're waking up in the morning. But that cold will help do a lot of things for us. She mentioned some health reasons for it. I did once do the cryotherapy where it brings all your blood back into your heart because your body's trying to keep itself warm. There's all sorts of studies about what cold does for us, particularly when we pair it inside of a shower or after a sauna or something like that. A lot of good studies that she talks about, but I won't mention them here. But she said that you'll just start with the warm shower that you had been taking and keep turning it down and down and down. She says that you can turn your back on it with that cool blast of water. She said it'll increase our metabolism, bring out our endorphins, and it'll do all sorts of things for us. And the more we get used to this, the more it'll be easier for us to end our shower in this way. Woo! She said that we should do the cool water for at least three minutes. And I'll try that out. And if you want to email me and ask me how it went, I'll be happy to tell you. Now we'll feel awake and energized and ready for everything. Part of this is she's talking that we're going to stack these habits together. So now we started the habit of shower. Pretty easy. Cool blast. That's stacked on top of it. And then the next part is she says that we need daily affirmations. It used to be kind of funny because affirmations hit a big point in the 90s. And then there was a Saturday Night Live uh, skit where there was a character who frequently did affirmations. And then Stuart Smalley would look in the mirror and say, I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it, people like me. And then it got made fun of that people did these affirmations. I think affirmations are having a comeback. Instead of it sounding flaky or sounding a little bit weird, the idea is that it's actually going to be, I think, shorter. It's actually going to be something very targeted to us. And it's going to be targeted to something that we're facing maybe even that day. So I never really liked the idea very much until I started doing it. That every morning I came up with a message that was geared for that day. If I had a presentation to do, I would tell myself, Remember to smile. Remember to look people in the eye. And then I would tell myself that first thing in the morning, the very most important thing I need to do. Or I even had one that I sort of set as a yearly goal that when I didn't have something to tell myself, I always put this in. I felt like I did a good job with certain tasks, but sometimes I just wouldn't make that task perfect. I'm a very practical and functional type person, which made me sometimes think, I don't have to do this extra step. Okay, I created this report. It actually gets the data you want out of the system. It's kind of ugly, but you know what? It's what you wanted. I could spend another hour and make it pretty, but it's the data you want. And I would give it to people, and they were happy to get this report. They were happy that they were able to use it and get the data they wanted out of the system. But then I started looking at it, And it didn't have good header columns. It didn't explain exactly what was going on. I should have relabeled some of the things. Just by taking that extra effort, it would have taken a pretty okay report and turned it into something valuable to people, something they could have run out of the system and shown to other people. The way I gave it, it made a very ugly (laughs) output that was incredibly useful with information. So that year I decided... I wanted to dot the I, that's what I called it, which means that I'm going to go through the final extra effort to make something better, to make something more valuable than what I was willing to initially give it, dot the I. So that was an affirmation every day before work, I would tell myself, remember, Jill, dot the I. And I think that's what she's saying here. You want some kind of a message that just will be inspirational for you. If you have a nerve-wracking day, it should be something that makes you feel bold. She said it could be practical, it could be spiritual, it could be religious, it could be a personal goal. She said that she's a runner, so she has a lot of those affirmations that talk about running. It could be even a compliment. Just remember, Jill, 
You're good at this. And don't back down on the things you believe. I tend to be an easygoing person. And I realized that once I became a consultant, people were paying money for me to be honest. And I try to say the nice thing. And I realized that's not what people are paying me for. So suddenly I had a new affirmation, which was be honest, tell the truth. It's not that I was lying to people. It's just that I tended to put it in the most positive way possible. And sometimes that's not trustworthy because maybe the thing you're saying is not positive. I was listening to a debate between two possible options. And the normal Jill is very much like, yeah, you could do it A or B. Either way works. But I started realizing that I had to be honest and method A does not work. Be bold. Be honest. Method B is the only way that matters. So the affirmations can be something that is setting you up for the thing that you really need to do. So now we're going to take our shower. We're going to state our affirmations. Could be more than one. And then we're going to finish with the cool blast of water, she says. We're also going to write them on the mirror. We're going to check them down. Now we're working our way through this morning routine. The next step is deep breathing. She wants us, while we're in the shower, to do what is called box breathing, which is where you... Breathe in for four, hold it for four, breathe out for four, hold the breath out for four, breathe back in. The idea is that the breath will help us focus better. It'll clear our mind of all the cobwebs we got going on, and it'll help us cool down, be more reflective, and get kind of any stress we might have in us. Okay, so now we're going to do that. We are going to get in the shower. We're going to say our affirmations, we're going to do our box breathing, and then we're going to hit with the cool blast. The rest of the book goes on, and it gets outside of this shower habit and talks about doing anything from yoga to cardio exercises, maybe getting a massage, brushing your teeth, getting lotion on. You're basically creating this perfect scenario for your day. She talks about the importance of being able to visualize our goals with a vision board. And we talked a little bit about that in episode 48. Cook the dreams of your life in the kitchen of the mind. Meaning that we're going to make things that we want visible. And once we have this vision board, then we'll be able to visualize our goals. So in the sense that this book gives you a framework for starting off your day correctly, having immediate success, checking things off of a list, and giving ourselves an affirmation that will set our day up correctly, I think that's a great idea. And I think that's something that you can take with as a very simple morning routine so that you can make your life a little bit more energetic and more successful. Hopefully this helps you. So my challenge to you is I would like you to write down a few affirmations that are particularly relevant to you right now. Then take your shower and make sure that you say those items that you indicated. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you being out there. Please remember that you can email me at jill at smallstepspod.com. You can also look at my Twitter feed, which is on my website, smallstepspod.com. The Twitter link is there. But every day I'm trying to find and curate information that will make your day better, whether it's positive information, but usually it's actual practical information that will help you get through something right now. Maybe I'm not doing a review of that particular book or that tweet in a podcast yet, but it's something that will be a quick hit to make your day better. And just remember, you can create a morning routine that has small steps.